have a different kind of like build to it. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the meeting of the Northern Planning Committee. I am Councillor Paul Wynn, Chairman of the Committee. We are not expecting a fire drill today. In the event of an alarm sounding, please leave the building and gather at the front of the building. I am obliged to inform you that this meeting is being live streamed and recorded. Could I also ask you to please ensure that mobile phone is switched off? and to ensure that only one your laptop is muted. To ensure the member, members of the committee at all points raised by the public speakers properly heard, I must advise you that I will not tolerate any disruptive behaviour. This is a meeting held in public, not a public meeting. And if such behaviour takes place and persists, I will adjourn the meeting. Members should ensure that they are present throughout the meeting, as you cannot vote on any item you have not heard or of debate. Uh, can members and officers introduce themselves each time before they speak, so those listening know who is speaking? I shall now ask the members of the committee and officers to introduce themselves. Mike, you'd like to start, please. Council of Education works for Austin Street West. Matt Breen, Quarry and Curtain Hill. Ted Clark, Facing Hill, and also part of Collins at the moment. Gary Burchett, thank you. <laughs> Jeff Elmer, Ellesmere, Urban. Joyce Barron, St. Oswald. Steve Davenport, Sir Martin, Tiddleston, and Tiddleston Heath at the moment. <laughs> I'm Duncan Kerr, Councillor for Oster Street South, and I'm here substituting for Councillor Aitor Towers. I'm Councillor Nigel Hartin from Clan Division here substituting for Councillor David Batson. Tap the lid, Planning and Development Services Manager. Sarah Robinson, Area Planning Officer. Kelvin Hall, Principal Planner. Philip Molyneux, Planning Manager North. Councillor Mark Jones, uh, I represent Kaboyne, West Brim and Salatin, and I'm also Vice Chairman of this um, Planning Department as well. And Paul Wynn again, I'm, I'm representing Crease Ward. Uh, going to apologies, apologies have been received from Councillor Vince Hunt, substituted for Steve Davenport. Sorry, don't mind it. Mary Sarah, Head of Vision and Democratic Services, and to my right, to mm -hmm. with a sore throat, is Emily Marshall of Kinsey of the Set. Sorry about that, ladies. Jumping <laughs> uh, but I suppose it's yet yeah, uh, substituted by Steve Temple and Councillor Ed Powers, substituted by Duncan Fair, and also David Vassman gives his apologies, and he's been substituted by Nigel Clark. Okay, so to confirm that the, meet, uh, the minutes from the meeting held on the 4th of April, I suppose it, please. Mark, thank you. Second, please. Mike, thank you. Uh, public questions don't receive, disclosure any pecuniary interests. Thank you. Uh, um, just to declare that I'm also a member of Shrewsbury Town Council. Ben, if I can declare as part of the combined ward that I'm in, I'll, I'll need to move to the back of the room relating to item whatever it is. Oh, sorry? Item five. Uh, item five, according to my learned friend here. Are you speaking on that? If, uh, very briefly, if okay. I may. Thank you. I rely on your colleagues. Okay. So, we'll start with uh, item five. Thank you. And thank you, Kelvin. You is doing this one. Thank you. <coughs> thank you, Chair. This is a, an application for a mixed use development, including retail units, a gym, drive through coffee shop and drive through restaurants, uh, a tanning and beauty salon and a residential care home, together with access, parking, landscaping and associated infrastructure. Uh, 
Um, there are some additional representations um, to, to, to note before I go on, uh, which have been previously circulated. There's a further comment from our drainage team, which was made in response to additional drainage information that has been submitted recently. Uh, the drainage team have confirmed that um, they don't raise any specific objection um, subject to a condition being imposed to require that detailed arrangements for drainage, surface and foul water are submitted and approved in writing by the planning authority and that condition is included in the conditions at the end of the report. They provided some further advice as well as to what the submitted details should um, include when it comes forward. It's also recommended that some amendments are made to section um, to condition seven and sixteen, uh, which are included in the committee report, to um, ensure that details of highways and engineering matters can come forward on a phased basis because it's if permissions granted. It's um, intended that the two separate phases of the site will be um, developed separately. Um, and also a change to the tree condition as well. We've also had a an objection from a member of the public, uh, which is set out in additional letters. I'm not going to read that through in detail, but um, I think it's all of those matters have all, already been included in the various items and to be addressed in the committee report. Um, this is a further statement that's been submitted by um, Avery Healthcare, which are one of the joint applicants, um, which is included in the additional representations as well. Again, I, I won't read through those. I'm assuming that members have had the opportunity to read through those themselves. Uh, we've also had a, an objection from the local member for the adjacent board of Neil. Uh, and again, um, these raise issues which I think have already been included in the and addressed in the committee report. Um, I have made some notes on those though at the end of that additional representation. Um, and um, in particular, I've made an additional note that in relation to the need for care homes, members should note that the strategic housing market assessment which is um, um, the most recent one, um, does include an assessment of the need for specialist housing in Shropshire and does identify <coughs> a need for additional care home provision over the period to 2038. And given that this site is located within the development boundary for Shrewsbury, it is considered that a care home in this location can contribute to meeting the longer term needs of Shropshire. Um, the other matters raised by the um, Council of Bentic in relation to the pitch and put facilities and the traffic matters and drainage have already been included in the report and I've, I've made further notes on the additional representations there. Uh, we've also received a further objection from a member of the public um, who they object on grounds of loss of public recreational space, loss of national, national hab, natural habitat, to the nearby wildlife corridor, increased traffic, increased pollution levels, dangerous access, um, the nature of the outlets being proposed and, and traffic impacts, inappropriate mix of business and residential care home, um, lack of need for fast food outlets and no need for extra care home places in the area and others have opened up recently nearby. Um, and finally, um, we've received um, further comments from the Council's Highways Officer um, who have clarified matters in relation to the current speed limit along Hazeldown Way, uh, which is the road running to the north of the site on the plan shown. Um, in relation to the current speed limit, which is 50 miles per hour, the Highways Officer has confirmed that this will be fully considered as part of the Section 278 and Stage 2 Road Safety Audit. Um, and that agreement would facilitate any changes to traffic regulation orders, including any speed limit reduction required. Um, so there has been a Stage 1 audit done already, and uh, which is, is sufficient for planning application purposes. And the Stage 2 audit, which would need to be carried out, would identify any safety concerns that would need to be addressed to allow the scheme to progress to construction. 
um, and the officer has also recommended that a condition is imposed to require that the existing pedestrian access being proposed to the west of the site also includes cycleway access as well. However, I have already included that amendment in the change, proposed change to condition number seven. So the, the applications come to um, committee as a site is owned by Shotland <laughs> Council. Um, you can see the location plan um, shown members visited the site this morning and viewed the site and the surrounding area. Um, you can see the context of the site to the north and to the east um, is a existing golf course. Immediately to the east, um, the orange building is the Ballantines uh, Leisure Club, some fitness club with a railway, railway beyond that. To the south, directly to the south, is the Millbridge Retail Park. And the nearest residential properties are to the, to the west. Um, and you'll see the that boundary of the site to the north, Hayesdown Way and Otley Road to the south, with a roundabout to the, to the west. <coughs> this is the extent of the application site, which is the limits of the former pigeon put uh, golf course. And this is just um, a photograph um, showing the nature of the site at present uh, with the boundary vegetation. So this is the proposed block plan. You can see there's two elements to it. The commercial and retail element is on the western side and the care home development will be on the eastern side. The commercial units to the north would be um, a two-storey building with five retail units on the ground floor and a gym on the first floor. And the two buildings to the south would be the drive-through and cafe and restaurant facilities proposed to be a KFC and a Starbucks. The access into the commercial unit would be directly off the existing slip road to the south from Otley Road um, and vehicles would either go into the drive-through units or they would park in the car parking spaces which are central to the site. That's an, that's an, um, an, an access only provision. Exit from the commercial units would be to the north onto Hazeldine Way via a new um, exit point. This will be a left turn only um, exit and there will be a physical barrier to, um, within the highway to prevent any right turning traffic. In terms of the care home, this would be accessed via a access and exit point further along the slip road towards the Valentine's access point and um, vehicles accessing the care home would park within the care home boundary and then exit onto the existing road which 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 currently um, uses of Valentine's and the golf course have to use which goes to the east of the of the site and then underneath Otley Road, as explained to members this morning, um, and then it comes back out onto Otley Road to the south of the site. Um, there would be an existing, there will be proposed pedestrian and cycle access to the site on the western side, as shown, which would link in with existing pedestrian and cycleway routes which are in and around the site as was pointed out to members this morning. One further thing to note is that um, at present the Town Council who um, want to take the grounds maintenance activities for the golf course currently do pass between their um, storage depot to the east um, to the to the golf course, which is to the north of Hazeldine Way. As part of the design of the proposals, there will be an access strip proposed around the northern side of the care home, which would ensure that they can continue to use that route, which crosses Hazeldine Way, where the cursor is just now. 
Um, additionally, there would be bicycle storage spaces proposed um, on both sites. So I'll just run through the elevations and the floor plans for the units. This is the retail unit, which is a two-storey building with a gym above and the retail units on the ground floor. Floor plans. <coughs> This is the proposed KFC unit, um, which would be mainly comprised timber cladding, external materials. The floor plan and the roof plan for the KFC unit. This is the proposed Starbucks drive through units, um, grey and brown timber cladding for materials proposed and a fair degree of glazing. The floor plans. So the elevations of the care home, it's a two storey and a three storey building in an S shape. Um, it's a varied roof height, um, some stepped facades and balconies to break up the elevations. Materials proposed would include brickwork and render and cladding, as shown on this plan. So the um, various floor plans, ground floor, first floor, second floor. And this is the proposed cycle and refuse and maintenance store, which would be adjacent to the care home. And these are some visuals proposed um, put forward by the applicant to show how the development would look, particularly the care home. This is one looking over the retail part of the site towards the care home, with the showing the the, the access to the to the care home, which is between the commercial and the care home development. And then the proposed access as well to the um, to the retail units and the car parking. Next one. This is taken from kind of above the Valentine's Fitness Club, looking to the rear of the care home. You can see the retail elements beyond the white blocks, showing the open space provided as well and the potential of the landscaping around the site. Uh, this shows the, um, the front entrance of the care home. The entrance from a different angle. And this is a one taken from the rear of the care home, which shows again some of the open space provided and some of the lawns, the formal and the informal lawns areas and areas of open space. <coughs> This shows the landscaping proposed for the care home and the open space provided. The proposal over provides on open space in terms of the expectations of our policies. Um, it proposes a lot of um, new planting, including trees and shrubs and hedgerow. 46% 40, approximately additional open space over and above what would be required under the, on the policy. Uh, this shows the tree removal and retention. The, the, the areas in red show the areas where trees will be removed from the site. And these were pointed out to members on the site this morning. The hedgerow around the site would be retained other than the bit which would form the access, the, the access, sorry, onto Hazeldown Way, where the hedgerow will be removed to break through. The areas in green are the areas of existing established trees which will be retained. Next. And this is a an overlay plan overlaid on top of a, an aerial photograph to, to show in light green the areas of trees which will be retained as part of the development. So part of the existing vegetated buffer to the west of the site will be removed, but there would be a retained element 
uh, around the perimeter of the site in, in addition to the existing hedgerow will be, which will be retained as well. So the proposal would result in the loss of 18 trees from the site um, and however there will be compensatory tree planting with an additional 45 new trees to be planted in addition to areas of hedgerow so there will be a, a substantial net gain of trees. And that this, this one's a, an indicative visual provided by the applicant um, to show that there will be some trees from the western side retained as part of the development uh, with additional trees proposed as well. This shows the pedestrian entrance being proposed from this part of the site. I just should point out though that, that there will be a condition imposed if permission is granted to ensure that that entrance to the site also facilitates um, access by cyclists as well, so it should be widened um, to, to provide a joint access, so that it links up with existing um, cycling routes within the area. So um, the, as I say, the, 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 the town council have object, objected to the, to the application and those objections are in 4.1.1 of the report. These have been addressed in the committee report. Um, no, there have been no specific objections raised by other consultees. Um, I've um, gone through most of the concerns of the town council as part of my presentation um, in terms of overdevelopment and highways issues and the green space. There'll be a proposed condition requiring the submission of a travel plan um, for approval which would ensure that opportunities to maximise sustainable um, options for travel are maximised for both elements of the development. There have been no objections raised by the highways officer and as I say discussions in relation to possible reduction in the speed limit on Hazeldine Way from 50 miles an hour to 40 miles an hour can be dealt with um, as part of the Section 278 agreement and the Road Safety Audit Phase 2. Um, in terms of Town Council's comments, the concerns over tree removal have been um, looked into as part of the committee report. The Council's tree officer notes that there will be additional compensatory tree planting. Um, to compensate for the 18 trees to be removed and hedgerow removal will be minimised. Details of drainage and um, infrastructure would be dealt with as part of the planning condition. In terms of need, the report notes that the site is within the development boundary of Shrewsbury where development of this nature is acceptable in principle. The need for additional care homes has been identified. The site does occupy an out-of-town centre location and satisfactory assessment has been undertaken to show that the retail and commercial element would not have a significant adverse impact on the Shrewsbury Town, town Centre. The existing or the former use of the site as a pitch and put facility has been addressed as well as part of the committee report. Cabinet approved in 2017 that the site will be deemed to be surplus to requirements and the pitch and put facilities has now been closed for some years. The site was identified as an asset of community, val asset of community value. Steps have been taken to deal with that matter to invite a group or groups to put forward a bid to take on the site um, and um, that that was addressed and as no bids came forward the site has now been delisted as an asset of community value so there's no in principle reason for why the development um, cannot go ahead based upon its previous use um, as a um, pitch and put facility officers consider that the layout and design is satisfactory the uses are considered to be compatible with the surrounding area there will be economic benefits associated with the development and biodiversity enhancements. And in conclusion, it is recommended that planning permission is granted subject to conditions. Thank you, Chair. 
Thank you, Kathy. We have three speakers on this item. So, David, can we like to come forward, please? David, you have three minutes. Would you like a 30 second warning? Um, no, too much time. Okay. Which one do I press? The right hand side. Thank you, Chairman. Proctor Council, as landowner, claim that Pitch and Putt Golf Course is surplus to requirement. Should we ask, as Shropshire Council failed to properly interpret and apply paragraphs 97, 98 and 99 of the NPPF, based upon <coughs> what we challenged to be flawed advice? Shropshire Council figures show over 2,500 paying visits were made in a year to the Pitch and Putt facilities. Predominantly, we suggest, used by young people under the age of 14. 2001 to 21 census data clearly shows Mill Estate, just a few yards away from this site, to have high levels of socio-economic deprivation. The same census figures show an increase of 40,000 new residents to Shropshire, many of which now reside in the Millbrace, Sutton, Rebrook and Column wards. Paragraph 98 of the MPPF says a robust and up-to-date assessment of the need for open space should be provided to determine if a facility is surplus to requirement. Shropshire Council does not have a robust up-to-date assessment available. Alternately, Shropshire Council officer report says there is no identified need in the Council's plain pitch and outdoor sports strategy for pitch and putt provision in Shropshire. I point out the plain pitch strategy does not cover the needs of golf. Indeed, there is no mention of golf throughout the 227 page report. So we believe the comment is erroneous. Paragraph 99 of the NPS states the former pitch and putt open space should not be built on unless an assessment has been undertaken, which has clearly shown the land to be surplus to requirement. This has not been done. The loss is replaced by equivalent or better provision. This has not been done. The development is for alternate sports and recreation provision, the benefits of which outweigh the loss. Given that today you are pro proposing to take away a much needed recreational facility accessible to young people and replace it with a fast tanning salon, fast food restaurant, care home for elderly, drive through coffee shop and a gym facility that young people under 14 would not even be able to access, then clearly this application fails to meet the requirements set out in paragraph 99 of the NPPF. Before this application is granted, we ask that a considerable sum of money should be set aside by the landowner so as to be able to replace the pitch and putt with equivalent or better provision elsewhere in Shrewsbury. Recently, Lady Justice Rose, on behalf of five Supreme Court judges, said their judgment would act as a warning to local councils that they need to take proper stock and they seek to sell public land. We recommend you should heed those wise words when considering this case to avoid a similar outcome. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, hey, could you just clarify something? The numbers you said over the 12 months prior when it was open, how many used it? Well, I, I, I use the figure 2,500. The for, actual for the year. The report of the um, the, the one that uh, the gentleman refers to actually says 2,590 uh, oh, to, to be accurate, but yeah. those were the paying the visitors. Obviously, the pitch and putt has got open access. So you oh, you've exactly. only actually counted the ones that people went to the little kiosk that's hidden around the back and paid. But that's by the by, Chairman. Right, 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 but but, but it's, pr it's from that report. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Uh, Local member, Councillor Rose, Rose Reeves, shall uh, now we have some forward, please. Thank you. Thank you. You have five minutes. Would you like a 30 second warning? Uh, hopefully, I'll get there before you. Thank you. And on behalf of local residents, I object to this planning application because of concerns about the impact on road safety, traffic volume, local congestion existing active travel facilities and environmental concerns as well as lasting damage to the local environment and potential loss of biodiversity in an area of our town the county town rich in wildlife 
Increased traffic volumes in an area of Shrewsbury already under pressure from over 1,000 new homes, home to Shrewsbury Town F uh, Football Club and the Meal Brace Shopping Centre. Although, that, although it is now paused, it was also the NHS's preferred location for the GP Super Hub, serving 45,000 South Shrewsbury residents. That may still come back onto the agenda. In among all this activity, the McDonald's drive through just 500 metres from the site of this application at Milbrae Shopping Centre, single-handedly causes tailbacks in the wider area at busy times. Add to that, pedestrians in great number go to foot ground on a busy Saturday afternoon and it's chaos. Don't come and visit them. And I, I note that the committee visited the site this morning um, on a Tuesday morning. It's a very, very different story. Traffic management within the Millbrae site has had to evolve to try to mitigate for the takeaway for the, the drive through um, there, involving two separate lanes, one for queuing for McDonald's and the other for single file entry into this large retail pass. There's no other entrance to the shopping centre. It doesn't really work. The same will apply to this site. Drive through takeaways are, by definition, heavily car dependent. Customers leave engines idling for extended periods, causing increased pollution, increased carbon emissions, emissions and increased standing traffic. The entrance and exit solutions proposed are unsuitable. So as far as traffic is concerned, just as the meal brace at McDonald's drive through has caused queuing traffic at busy times, the same is likely to happen on this site, adding yet more congestion to an already congested area. The site, as you will have seen this morning, is absolutely adjacent to the Millbrace roundabout, and, and that will have a, a, a rapid impact on traffic all around South East Shrewsbury. It's worth noting that Shrewsbury Police are regularly involved in antisocial behaviour issues related to the drive through at Millbrace, and that another 24 hour McDonald's drive through is planned on Old Potts Way within five minutes' drive of the existing and these new drive throughs. No less than three entrances are proposed off the slip road immediately adjacent to the meal brace roundabout. This will undoubtedly cause problems for drivers entering the proposed site. Sharp braking, queues backing up, drivers signalling left but unable to indicate which left of these three entrances that are very close together. The existing slip road into Ballantyne's Club and Golf Course is already difficult for traffic heading from meal, the meal brace roundabout onto Otley Road. There's always a bit of juggling for position on two lanes that disappear rapidly into one lane and then there's a complication of the slip road. Three more exits off this road will be dangerous and should not go ahead as proposed. The dedicated exit from the proposed care home onto Otley Road, I think this may be wrong, I think I may have got this point wrong actually, um, it, it creates further potential road safety issue. Um, and because we had thought it, it exited straight onto Otley Road rather than to that, that curve that comes underneath. But I'll say it anyway in case I'm wrong again. Um, it, it should be joined with the exit onto Hazeldine Road, um, for all, you know, which should be used for all aspects of the development. The three problematic entrances cross cut an existing, well established, and well used cycle and walking route along Hazeldine and before Millbrace Roundabout, or, or let's say uh, westerly Millbrace Roundabout, um, which is which is extremely well used. Um, it's a cycle and, and, and walking route. It creates cross-cutting, creates safety concerns for cyclists and pedestrians. I note the plans have a dedicated route into the retail area, um, and, and this should be the same for cyclists. I think that, um, Kelvin, you said earlier that that would now be the case. I may be wrong. Yeah. Um, a case can be made to take cyclists and pedestrians into and around the site from the Way. Oh, thank you. And onto Onley Road safely behind the new development. This way, the more vulnerable road users can be directed away from the increased and potentially stationary traffic. Hazeldine Way has a 50 mile an hour speed limit. I think it should be reduced to a minimum of 40. <laughs> Two parts of the golf course are, are either side are maintained by. Um, the town council and have um, they have to get across the road as we know. The four pillars of uh, Shropshire Council's local uh, plan. So, sorry, the Shropshire plan. That's time, Rosie. Okay. Can I read my last one sentence? Well, they could. Be. Yeah, thank you very much. And um, it require they speak of a desire for healthy people and a healthy environment. Drive-through takeaways must be the complete opposite of how we create healthy people. And traffic congestion has a negative health impact as it does on the local environment. Thank you very much. Thank you much, Rosie.
Okay, next, Tom Wilcox, let's come forward, please. Yeah. After speakers, okay, Ted? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Can I? Yes, you can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Then move to the back out to Okay. Right, Tom, you have three minutes. We'd like to send a second warning. New Chair, councillors. Cornwall have been working with the council to design and develop a proposal for the redundant pitch and putt site since it was approved for disposal in 2019, the surplus's requirement. The current scheme has resulted from a full review and brief undertaken involving consultation with the planning officer during pre-application, our design team, the adjacent golf course and the town council maintenance team to ensure our plans work not only for our residential uh, for our residential care home, our identified operators, but also for the neighbouring sites. The proposals are designed to extremely high standard, and we have agreements in place with good quality operators to take the units, which is positive in a challenging market. The care home operator Avery offer unrivaled quality and comfort and provide residential and nursing services and have provided a separate supporting statement. Our current proposal has addressed concerns raised by the consultees and the objectors with the alteration to the site boundary to allow the town council continued usage of the rear site to maintain the golf course. We've addressed all aspects of the scheme in relation to open space and have altered the landscaping plans to the care home to improve the retention of trees as well as the introduction of 45 additional trees to benefit the area. The landscaping specification also includes new shrubbed areas, native and beach hedging and a new wild garden. There are a number of trees at the front of the site. They're not category A trees or TPO, many conifers, which are in close proximity and are in need of attention, as they've been neglected and overgrown with ivy, issues with foul discharge and a number of decaying trees. Our plans are to retain any good quality B and C trees within the areas identified on the tree retention plan. This will include felling some of the trees which will benefit those which are to remain. In addition, we are retaining the established trees along Hazeldean, the vast majority of hedgerow along the boundary of the site, and we shall work with the tree officer via the landscaping condition. The uses we are creating are those which are complementary to the surrounding area and will provide in excess of 90 much needed full time and part time jobs for the commercial element and a further 80 jobs for the care home or for local people. In addition, we're using a local framework to tender the works and the scheme will employ in excess of 250 workers during construction. Our transport consultant has worked closely with the highways officer to ensure pedestrian, cycle and carborne transport are safely catered for and we have altered our design to take on board all of their comments as well as those which are highlighted as part of the road safety audit and note highways have no objections. Overall, the scheme will provide facilities and demand for both local people and passing trade, provide much needed jobs and will maintain the leafy feel with robust and considered landscaping proposals. And we welcome the officer's positive recommendation. We hope you're able to approve this application. Thank you very much, Tom. Well done. Uh, so let's speak, I'll just move back to Kelvin now, see if he wants to respond to any of those. He might give more, more weight to what you want to say. Kelvin, would like to respond to any of those comments? Not specifically, but I'm more than happy to answer any questions if obviously any members want further back. Okay, thank you. Right, sir. Thank you. Five minutes you've got, sir. Thank you, Chair. Short and for health and safety reasons as much as ever, sir. I felt it was better to stay down here than in the rain. Um First of all, I'd like to uh, uh, express support for uh, Councillor Rosemary. Department comments, which I agree with. Uh, I've no issue with the design or the aesthetics of the proposed uh, plans, but do have a major issue about the impact of the increased traffic um, <clears throat> on the uh, very busy uh, Meal Island, uh, which is already on frequent occasions uh, crammed entirely with um, uh, uh, fast food traffic that is that is travelling to McDonald's in the adjacent um, retail park. It's always, which is always very busy. Um, I think, I do think it will be very short. The additional fast food traffic 
in so close to, to, to Meal from this other direction will, I think, cause all sorts of issues over the, over the longer term. Uh, there'll be serious problems, I think, relating to Meal Island if and when this, this, this application is put through. Um, the speed limit, although it's, uh, I can understand its reason, I don't think it's going to be a major issue. The reduction in the speed limit, that, that doesn't address, address the issues of meal, which is the major problem. Everything funnels onto that meal island, which is very complicated. Um, and I am generally very concerned for the future of the, of the traffic congestion that there inevitably will be on 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 on, on Meal Brace uh, Island if this application is allowed through. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. Thanks for your time. We'll give you a couple of seconds to get to the back of the room. Okay. Okay. If you hear a scream, it's me. <laughs> I think they'll Okay, on to the floor now. I've got two indicated already. So, we'll kick off Gary. Thank you, Gary. Well, I think it was Jeremy, uh, Cass Gary Burton from the Bike Aid Division. Um, I have concerns about the traffic situation at this roundabout. I know we visited there on Tuesday morning, uh, as the council have already said, on a Saturday, the traffic is backed up half up headed on day for three or four hours in a row while the access to retail park. The traffic is horrendous. On a football match day, you cannot even get onto that side of Shrewsbury. The roads are that busy. Um, my, my definite issue is the three proposed new entrances right next to Bannertown's. The traffic will all be trying to squeeze in off a two lane road into it within 50 metres onto a single carriageway road, trying to turn left into, first of all, the KFC site, second of all, the KM site, and third of all, the Valentine site. The exit onto Hazardine Way, um, I know Roger mentioned the, the, the issues with, with, with pedestrians and uh, cyclists, they're actually on the other side of Hazardine Way, so they won't be affected. But people who still leaving the site are really congested point with Hazardine Way, and that you could sat there for half an hour trying to get out. At least on the McDonald's one, there's a roundabout to get it on. I'm not proposing many around about there, it'll be a disaster, but there's going to be huge issues with traffic egressing the site at that point. And the other issue is with the active travel plan at 6.5.5. They talk about a bus route within easy proximity. There's no bus route on Hereford Road. The nearest bus route comes down the middle of the Meal Estate, and it's a good six or seven hundred metres away from the site. And to get to it, pedestrians have to cross three major roads around the roundabout. Yes, there are traffic control at each one, and the for cyclists and traffic and pedestrians, but it's not a major detection to the site. It's a good walk away. For people who get a little bit of news, it's, it's far too too much. Um, I'm not having to say whether I've got the support or not, so I'm going to raise those points. Hey, thank you, Nigel. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Yeah, I've got some of the concerns over the, uh, the, the traffic flow and the modelling that perhaps has gone on in, in to determine whether or not, you know, highways can support. I'd be interested to know from highways officers what the modelling is in terms of the increased amount of traffic that's likely to be um, uh, to be generated as a result of these these uh, these um, fast food restaurants. They generate a lot of traffic, as Councillor Dartle Dar has pointed out. Um, I'm concerned about whether or not we've done sufficient modelling. No, no evidence of that seems to be being, being brought forward within, within the report. I'm also rather concerned that particularly the exit into, into Hazeldown Way, I mean, I mean that can can back up tremendously, as well as the other acts, the Otley Road. Um, and I've got great concerns that if you've got um, a massive amount of traffic coming in uh, into fast food restaurants, trying to get out of this at the same time, it's going to cause some horrendous issues. Um, I just don't feel that we've got enough information for the traffic modelling so far to, uh, to take a decision. Thank you, Nash. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Chair. I, I, I'm concerned about this as well. I, I'm, I'm concerned about the loss of uh, the mature habitat. Um, most of the, where it says retained trees, they're not actually part of the site. So um, to say that they're being retained is a bit, <laughs> a bit cheeky in a way because they, they, they don't actually, they're outside of the site in, in the first place. Um, but I'm not sure that the planting that's 
intended will will adequately replace what's what's being lost. It seems to me a overdevelopment really that, that there's a lot crammed into a very what, what isn't actually a, a very large site. And I'm also concerned about the the loss of of this open space, uh, as the gentleman said. I mean, what 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 is the evidence that this is actually surplus to requirements? Um, I'm not sure that that's been adequately explained, but um, as well as the traffic that, that other people have pointed out, I, I, I just um, I think there's there's considerable natural habitat that's going to be lost here. Duncan. Yeah, and some were saying uh, concerns have been voiced over the share, which is about the traffic flows, particularly traffic flowing into this site and deciding I'd rather go to McDonald's and going back from McDonald's and, and the traffic between the sites. The way it's presented, um, nobody would ever go there because nobody would ever know what was there. So quite clearly, when these are developed, there's going to be a match of signage all around the buildings because nobody's going to survive to the Starbucks there about telling the public on the road outside what's there because you're not on that picture there, you have no idea, would you? So I think how it will actually look in reality will be quite different from that. There will be, um, may require plan permission, but hard to refuse it once you've given uh, permission for the actual development to refuse quite considerable signage around right opposite a nature reserve and in an area which it feels very green. I am also concerned about a loss of amenity land. I don't see any evidence. This, we visited the land this morning. It seems to be open land. I don't know if any analysis has been done on how much is actually used by local people for, I don't know, kick around, kids to play in or whatever. But there's no restrictions, it seems, on using the land. But I see no evidence anybody's actually ascertained whether it's actually used um, following its closure as a pitch and pat, but it's still available to the public as open land. And we know we have to be careful about a lot of open land and we have to be legally careful about having gone through the right steps. And I have concerns in that regard. And I think they're, they're shared by the member who spoke. Um, so I am concerned about local space and I think we have not bottomed anywhere near the traffic flows and impact that would have on a local community. And I live many miles away but I've, I've been to football matches here so I know what that area is actually like um, match day and at other times it's very congested and this because of the dynamics of it the way the roads all flow around it will make things significantly worse. That's Thank you Chair. <clears throat> Yes, I support all of the concerns that I've heard so far. And one thing I picked up, for, firstly, from the agent said that some of the trees have been damaged by foul discharge. I did not know what that referred to. I'd be very interested to know what that was. Um, and does that relate to the, uh, the quality of the ground or what, what exactly has gone on there? Um, and I also want to back up um, Councillor Birchett's comment regarding the, the issue of public transport in that uh, I think it's far too breezy, the comments regarding uh, access to public transport. Uh, and until we've actually got a, a proper bus service running along the Otley Road, I don't think we can actually say there is a, a viable public transport uh, facility there. And also I'd like to... Uh, uh, on the back of what uh, one of the speakers, Mr. Kilby, said um, regarding the, re, uh, the, the uh, date of the assessments regarding um, open space provision, uh, I would like actually the officers to tell me what is the date of their assessment in that regard. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. No, Calvin, can I come back to you for a couple of questions there, please? Matt, no, please. Okay, well, um, I, I've made notes, but if, if I've missed anything, then please let me know. But um, um, in terms of the um, loss of vegetation, I do um, know the point that Councillor Isherwood made that um, some of the trees for retention are outside of the site boundary. Um, however, it is important to note, however, that they aren't being removed, so they will still continue to form a visual buffer to the whole development. Um, importantly, um, of the 18 trees that would be removed, there'll be significant additional replanting. And so it would be a significant, a substantial benefit in terms of um, visual um, buffer and biodiversity as well because of that tree planting. Details of that would form part of a landscaping scheme 
to be a grid as well, which will obviously optimise the amount of landscaping that can be provided on the site. Um, in terms of the um, use of the site at the moment, um, as the report says, it was the former use was of a pitch and put facility. Um, an assessment was done by the council in 2017, and there was a report to cabinet in 2017 which set out um, the declining use of the pitch and put facility. And the proposal put forward um, was that the site should be deemed surplus to requirements, and cabinet agreed. Um, that um, that um, the report said that the pitch and put course have seen a decline in use in recent years. This is in 2017, um, down by 1,000 visits in the last four years from a peak of 2,500 in 2011. Um, and that the proposal was that cabinet is requested to agree that the Shrewsbury pitch and put course is declared surplus to requirements and the marketing of the site is approved on the open market. Um, cabinet uh, did agree that and that and the remainder of the report forms the assessment uh, which is required in the MPPF in terms of um, as you will see in section Um, section 6.1.4 of the committee report, the paragraph 99 of the MPPF um, requires that, um, that open space should not be built on unless an assessment has been undertaken, which has clearly shown the land to be surplus to requirements. Um, officers are of the view that that assessment was undertaken as part of that cabinet paper. Um, and Cabinet agreed that it was surplus to requirements and therefore part A of paragraph 99 has been met. The, the, the two further paragraphs in, in the MPPF requiring that the loss is replaced by an equivalent or better provision or the development is for alternative sports and recreational provision do not need to be met because part A of that report has been met because it has been clearly been shown to be surplus to requirements. The land is owned by the council. The council has deemed it to be surplus to requirements. The cabinet have agreed that and have agreed that it can be marketed on the open market. Um, so there's no facility now or no um, objective on behalf of the council that it is remain, retained in um, recreational use um, um, going forwards. In terms of the current um, access of the site, um, there are signs up on the land to say that the, 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 the site um, does not form part of the golf course and shouldn't be used for those purposes. Um, and there is no um, formal right for that piece of land or, um, to be used for recreational purposes uh, at present. Um, in terms of um, the, 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 the highways matters, um, a traffic assessment has been undertaken as part of the planning application. Um, this has been um, um, assessed by our highways officer. The um, tra transport assessment does set out what the expected amounts of traffic to and from the site would be. Um, the report does um, say that um, the expected traffic from the proposed development can be accommodated without creating material adverse effects on the local highway network. Um, it also says that <coughs> the site egress onto Hazeldine Way remains well within capacity and the queue on Hazeldine Way from the traffic signals does not queue past the junction. Um, that report has obviously been considered by the highways officer as part of his comments and he has raised no objection. Um, he's looked at the road safety assessment as well and raised, raised no objection to that. However, has acknowledged that there would be a need for some, um, some um, elements to be confirmed as part of the secondary road safety audit. 
um, but the overall picture is that although I do have in front of me details of um, the trip generation expected, um, the conclusion of the highways officer <coughs> is that he, he would not be raising objection to the proposal on highways grounds. In terms of the care home, of course, um, it, it, the, 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 because of the nature of that development, the likely traffic um, generation from that is likely to be very small. Um, that is um, it, it indicated as well by the limited amount of parking that's being proposed for the care home. Um, the, the, this, this particular care home will provide personal and, and dementia care. Um, the, the main use of the car parking will be for um, staff and visitors only, and the care home operator, Avery, based upon their experience, um, they, they anticipate that residents wouldn't have their own car, and so the likely traffic um, levels in relation to that element of the scheme will be limited to um, staff and visitors only, and, and so that would be a limited impact on the, on the local highway network. If, if, if there's anything else that I've missed, then I do apologise, but please let me know. Thank you, I think I've heard the final indicate, so well. Steve? Just a general, um, first a general um, comment. Is, you know, I see yet another fast food, it's great, employing people, but we, we've got to help our highways here in I've been banging on about this for years. In any fast food joint that opens up somewhere, they have a mile radius of clearing litter up as part of the planning application. So no matter where it is, you drive up to a mile away, paper everywhere, and that should be part of the planning uh, conditions. It's been saying it for years. That's general. Uh, specifically, uh, already on this site here, again, I was in, involved in the planning on the burger um, uh, roundabout there, as we called it at the time, and uh, it's, uh, it was gridlocked before it was done. Uh, traffic has, has increased since, and it is in gridlocked at times now. You know, I, I, um, I just want to make that comment. It's all about trying to reduce traffic, not increasing it. Thank you. Thank you. Chair? Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, from what I've heard and what I saw this morning, I've, I've got a feeling that this site is, is in danger of being overdeveloped. Um, I know it was a leisure and recreational use, and I'd like it to continue in, in, in that form. I think, from what we've heard, I do disagree with the high risk officers that I do think it's going to generate traffic and it's going to affect the current retail sites because the people queue up now for a quarter of an hour, 20 minutes, half an hour. That's only going to get worse. And you think what's going to happen on a match day? Um, also, as my colleague says, litter is is a prime concern with it, with these sorts of venues. Twenty four hour opening for KFC, I suppose Starbucks will be the same or similar. So we'll be generating traffic on, all day, um, and I don't think I'm particularly happy with it. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Gary. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm going to propose that we defer this application for three reasons, Mr Chairman. The first reason is I don't believe the uh, 6.1.4 adequately covers the fact that the, 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 the reduction in people using the site was caused when Ballot House was built and the pay kiosk for the site was around the back end of Ballot House. So anybody coming out to the site didn't know where to pay. So I know for a fact, because I did it myself, we'd walk on and we'd pay pitch and put for half an hour, 45 minutes for free on, 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 the, on the concept that at some point an officer come up and ask us for money. And I know quite a few other people who did the same thing. So, so the figures of the lack of use of the site are disingenuous. Can't fix it now. It's, it's been out now for four years. So it would be impossible to reinstate it and try and get facts again. My well, second point, as already mentioned, is I don't believe the traffic management plan has been audited during the busy times of the week. And I'd like a full and comprehensive audit over the busy times you know, it also makes uh, has our way when back up past the junction. It backs up all the way to rerun round event on a Saturday, which is half mile fill up the road. So we need to have proper traffic management, highway management, to ensure that we look at all day parts from access and egress. 
And my third point is the active travel point about the buses. Until we get a bus onto Watley Road, we can't expect 80, 90 year old pensioners to walk across three major roads into Mill Village, Mill Estate, to get a bus into town. So that's my reason for asking yeah. the film. You're asking for right, so your proposal to fail. Okay, we've got a couple more speakers yet. So, Nigel. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you, Kelvin, for um, answering some questions. But um, although you did touch upon the uh, the traffic assessment, um, which I'm, I'm <coughs> seeing specifically, I'd be interested to, to know what the uh, traffic assessment for, for, for peak load will be at, at, at uh, busy times. So I think that's, that's something that <coughs> is quite important for us to know, really, to decide whether or not. You know, the assessment that's been carried out seems reasonable or not, and, and without having, having cited that, without being able to question high risk officers actually here, um, it's, it's difficult to tell that really. Um, so I'm sort of mind at the moment to, to support Councillor Birchett's um, proposal, I think, to, to, to defer, because I think we just don't have enough information to, on which to take a decision. I'm surprised that high risk officers are not here that we can't question them. Yeah, yeah. all right. Mm -hmm. Are you supporting, are you seconding? Yeah. Right. Okay. So we have choice to speak, yeah, yeah. choice. I think I'm actually um, complimenting what Gary said and also uh, Nigel. Um, what I've got here is, has any sort of desktop exercise actually taken place of vehicle movements around the area and what impact these facilities would have on the movements? Having listened to the local members, I do have concerns about the pressures on the road system around this area. I wonder whether the application could be withdrawn Oh, sorry. Should I start again? No, it's fine. I think I can hear you. Don't worry. <laughs> sorry. With the, with the audience, let me start again. Could you hear? Sorry. Oh, that's all right. Then. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, I do have concerns about the pressure on the road system around this area and wonder whether the application could be withdrawn. So I'm saying basically the same as everyone else. And that a better way is found of managing vehicle movement. Uh, and for it to come back to committee to be reassessed. Does there have to be a fast food retail outlet which would generate the larger number of vehicle movements? I'll there is it. a real need, though, I must, I do want to point this out, there is a real need for care homes for dementia patients. I personally found this a couple of years ago with a family member struggling to access suitable care facilities for someone with dementia and actually the person involved at a point ended up somewhere totally unsuitable so um i do welcome that part of the application thank you thank you i'll come back to calvin now could you give us an update on what surveys have been done what time have you done calvin please um on traffic movements yeah yeah well i I, I, I say a traffic assessment has been done. I take the point that it was done on a particular day. Um, again, I come back to the point that that has been you know, assessed by our highways team. They have not raised any particular issues about when it was done and how it was done. Uh, I, I, although the, the highways officer isn't here, to, he's been unable to be here today. It's not that he, he, he wouldn't have been, he's just unable to be here today. Um, he has been making some comments though um, to, 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 to the committee, which I can read out, that the care home will be lightly trafficked, of course, um, and he is satisfied that the commercial element can be accommodated. Of course, um, I would say that the, the, the likelihood is that the occupants of the care home um, wouldn't be taking a lot of movement themselves um, at, at all. So um, I, I do note the point about, you know, um, connecting to public, um, routes and um, the public transport and the like, but um, the level of movement is likely to be small in any event. Public transport in the area is an issue um, which we are aware of. Um, we have had Section 106 agreement money from the Otley Road developments towards improving, improving public transport, so it's not something that it is going to be necessarily the, the, the same at all times, and the expectation will be that you know, it would get better um, in the future. Um, I, I think um, that, um, the, of course, the other thing to point out is that it's an additional facility and, you know, you can only drink one cup of coffee at any one time. Um, now, if you're going to go to McDonald's to have a coffee, then you might decide to go to, you know, Starbucks to have a coffee instead. It wouldn't necessarily mean that you're doubling the amount of traffic in the local area. Um, you might just decide to switch. 
because you know a Starbucks coffee might be better than a McDonald's coffee to you or something like that or a fast food outlet. It's another you only eat one fast food um, at, at, at any one time. So it doesn't necessarily mean that just because you're getting additional development there, you're getting double the amount of traffic. Um, people might just switch. Um, and I come back to the point that um, that we, we, we could provide some more information as part of the report in terms of um, peak flows and the like. Um, but, but members should bear in mind that whilst you might want to do your own assessment of that, an assessment has already been done by our highways team. Thank you, Calvin. I don't think the bother about that uh, your people sound like these, it's a fast food outlet with the traffic. That's the thing obviously the committee's concerned about more. And that's indicated we have to run the table. So the one for me. Go on now. Thank you. Yeah, it's just to come back to that. I uh, hadn't heard any comment from uh, Kelvin regarding my question regarding that issue of um, final discharge. Um, I say it is a genuine question, and I'm not expecting the officer to know straight away what that is actually means, but maybe it's another reason for deferrals to go away and find out precisely what that is. Um, and the other point is, I think that uh, with, with regard to um, compounding um, more and more businesses, it tends to have a honeypot effect, so you actually attract more people to it. But uh, anyway, that's just my thank you. Now, I think we've had the proposal and second on the table. I think we've debated it enough, so I'm going to go to the vote if that's okay, Miranda. Yeah. Recorded vote, yeah. um, the roll call. Roll call, thank you. So, we'll go to the vote now. Thank you, Chair. So, members, the proposal is to defer this matter for the reasons that have been set um, out by um, it was Councillor Birch, it wasn't it? So, um, I'll call your name. Can you indicate for or against? <coughs> I, I just wondered, I think I need an issue with the trees because that's been was brought up as well. No. I think that was Alison. Um, was that answered, I think? Yeah. It was answered, but I'm, I'm personally not convinced about the, the planting scheme, um, that it will adequately replace the, the mature habitat that's that's there at the moment. But, um, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's the highways thing, really, to be honest, uh, and the one on that side. So, right, OK, as long as it's clear. Yeah. yeah. You want me to read out the three issues that were raised? I think Councillor Birch had set them out. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, the, so the three specific reasons Councillor Birch indicated for a deferral was because didn't believe that the um, lack of use had been adequately dealt with concerning the recreation use, um, traffic uh, management um, uh, review in terms of the busy times and. A, an audit of that, so they wanted further information on that, and also the active travel issue. And then I think um, you may or may not wish to pick this up, but Councillor Green had raised the issue regarding foul discharge, which yeah, was raised you know, by um, the applicant in his public speaking. Um, so those were the issues raised for a deferral. So, yeah, so, but both members said they had to sit on board. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, Councillor Barrow? Paul. Councillor Birchett? Four. Councillor Elner. Four. Councillor Clark. I'm oh, sorry, beg your pardon. <laughs> oh. yeah. Councillor Davenport. Four. Councillor Green. Four. Uh, Councillor Isherwood. Four. Councillor Jones. Four. Councillor Kerr. Four. Councillor Hartin. Four. And Councillor Wynne. Four. That's your now, Mr Chair. Right, we'll move on to the next application. Thank you very much for that. Just let them jump forward. Move on. Yeah. Right. Van West London Road War. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Philip. Those presenting this one. This, this is a full application for the erection of 10 dwellings on an enclosed area of land within the Islands Cross near War. The development consists of eight open market dwellings, a south build bungalow, and one affordable dwelling. Uh, members will note there's no update on the update sheet. 
Right. Uh, the first slide is the site location plan, indicating the site outlined in red here. Uh, along the B class road, in front on the front, housing to the side up here. Uh, it, the, the, the proposed site covers an area of 0.78 hectares and is located between 1 2 Erdersley Court to the north and Shiretton House to the south. And as I've indicated, the B5415 London Road running along the southeast boundary. Open fields are located to the west. Uh, this is the proposed site plan. The, this plan shows the development of a predominantly a roadside frontage with a small private estate road serving four dwellings and further three accesses serving the remaining dwellings. The plots are well spaced and provide spacious rear gardens. A two meter wide pavement will be provided along the entire roadside frontage, allowing pedestrians access to the existing footpath to the north of the site to Islands Cross and into War. This plan also shows a roadside street view, which provides a mixture of house signs which replicate features of existing dwellings in the settlement. As amendments have been made to the design and appearance of the of the dwellings from that was originally submitted during the consideration of the application. And this is referred to in paragraph 1.4 of the officer's report. The following Slides indicate the scale and appearance of the dwellings. First one, uh, they're a, mix a, a, a mixture of uh, scale and size dwellings as set out at the start of the officer's report. No, it's only tax for you. Uh, there's a detached, another detached, as you can see, a mixture of houses. This is the single story dwelling that's located to the rear of the site. Uh, I'll explain about this one later in the presentation. Uh, the garages, uh, one notable amendment to this site was uh, the uh, relocation of garages. Some of the houses along 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 the road, London Road here, had garages in their to their front elevations. Uh, these have mostly been moved to the side. Uh, that there is one example, another one here, and uh, as I indicated, uh, reasonably sized rear gardens as well. Uh, this plan shows the development which will have a replacement native hedgerow and tree planting along the roadside, which will extend along the small estate road. Some hedgerow planting is also provided between plots four and five and between plots six and seven. Yeah. The existing native hedgerows adjacent to the field, to the field will remain. Uh, aerial photographs. This aerial photograph shows development site and in particular a native hedgerow which was planted in 2018 along the western boundary under a European Peer protection species mitigation license in relation to the protection of great crested newts. Uh, there have been issues raised with regards to great crested newts. Uh, I, I refer members to the to the officer's report that explains this in my, in an adequate fashion, in my opinion. And please note that uh, our planning conscious raises no objections. And now onto uh, photographs. The top left photograph shows number one and two urgency court with front gardens, hedgerows and trees separate these two dwellings from the development. The top right photograph shows London Road and existing boundary hedge. The bottom left photograph, as viewed from the north towards the southern boundary, shows that the site currently consists of grass and is near enough flat. Uh, the last photograph uh, shows side elevation of Sheraton House and the tennis court, which adjoins the southern boundary of the site.
As indicated in Section 6.1 of the Committee Report, the site has been subject to several previous applications. Outline consent was originally granted in 2014 with an identical site boundary as being proposed. This application required a European Protected Species Mitigation Licence, which resulted in the planting of the native edgerow along the western boundary. A gravity-fed fowl mains was approved in 2017 and has been installed. The outline permission lapsed, although in 2021 a new outline permission was granted for 10 dwellings within the development boundary for the war neighbourhood plan. This remains extant. Objections have been received from residents and the Parish Council regarding concerns that the development encroaches outside of the adopted development boundary, as indicated in the War Neighbourhood Plan. Uh, this slide buddy now shows the extent of the War Neighbourhood Plan, uh, which runs along here, where the cursor is going now. And, and down here, around here. And so the uh, bungalow single story dwelling as referred to earlier here, where the country is now, is outside the development boundary in accordance with the war neighbourhood plan. However, the area of land that this property is, is proposed to be built on equates to 0.1 hectare. A larger proportion down here where the cursor is now of 0.18 hectares uh, will remain as countryside. Uh, I'm, I, I also need to make clear uh, while I, as I've already indicated, the war, this application strictly isn't in accordance with the war neighbourhood plan because there's a single story dwelling here. However, the war neighbourhood plan is part of the local plan as a whole. Uh, this app, a dwelling built here would comply with the SAMDEV. As war does not have a designated development boundary, it's for infill. Uh, this dwelling site here is considered infill because, as I touched on earlier, there are dwellings to the north, and obviously the proposed ones along here, uh, and, the, and the long running planning history with plan permissions being granted for this area. Our government guidance states that development plans should be used in the determination of planning applications unless material consideration indicate otherwise. As I've touched on, the local plan inclu includes in the NPPF, the core strategy, the SAMDEF plan and the most up-to-date one of the War Neighbourhood Plan. The development should be considered against the local plan as a whole. The proposed site is located within the settlement of Ireland's Cross, with the majority of the site falling within the development boundary of the War Neighbourhood Plan, as I've touched on. It is acknowledged that a small section falls outside this area. Although the development site is within an enclosed landscape plot of land positioned between existing residential development within the settlement. It's policy S11.2 of the Sound Air Plan that supports the delivery of housing development through infilling and small groups of housing. Uh, it is, the proposed development will protect and enhance habitat for great crested newts by retaining the established native boundary hedgerow Whistle the development will result in the loss of less open countryside than the outline approval granted in 2021. The site is located within a sustainable settlement with existing resident development, development on two boundaries, providing a natural development and will not extend outright into overall open countryside. As such, with a single story dwelling to the north, as I touched on, does not comply with the War Neighbor Plan. A uh, dwelling at this location does comply with the Sound Dev. Uh, it is also noted this application remains for 10 dwellings as per the original outline approval for development of this location. Section 6.5 of the committee report considers the impact of the existing highway. The application has demonstrated that adequate visibility can be provided from all the access points and to ensure highway safety, it is, reckon, it is recommended that the speed limit is reduced to 40 miles per hour. The Council's Highway Officers raises no objection, and this aspect does form part of a proposed Section 106 to, to be included. 
along with the affordable housing Dwayne. Uh, section 6.6 of the committee report considers the impact of the replacement of the hedgerow and tree planting. The proposed landscaping and tree planting will assist to visually enhance the appearance and improve biodiversity of the site. Uh, it is noted the council high tree officer also raises no objections. Uh, section 6.7 of the committee report considers the impact on ecology and in particular the impact on great crested newts. The retention of the western boundary hedgerow installed under the European Protection Species Mitigation Licence is essential to prevent impact or loss of habitat. The council ecologists agree to this. With consideration to all the material reasons, on balance, the proposed development is considered to be in a sustainable settlement which supports residential infill. Whistle the layer provides spacious plots with different house types to respect the character and appearance of properties within the nearby settlement, Islands Cross. The development will not impact on residential immunity, result in any highway safety concerns no de detrimental impact on ecology and ensures adequate drainage to an existing main power main can be provided. Whistle the application is not strictly in accordance with the no war neighbourhood plan. It does comply with the Shropshire local plan as discussed in the report and during this presentation as a whole. And therefore, this application is recommended for approval subject to conditions Completion of Section 106 Agreement for one on-site affordable dwelling and a, a, a makeup of a housing contribution, together with a reduction in the speed limit to 40 miles per hour along the road frontage and the conditions as set out in Appendix 1 attached to the report. That concludes my presentation on this application, Mr Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. We have two written statements. You've got about six to Miranda and one speaker. Thank you, Miranda. Thank you, Chair. This is from Murray Brunt, who is a neighbour, and he states, The land in question is open countryside, and given the location should not have been a site considered for development ever. However, in 2013, five years SAMDEV had not been fulfilled, and so applications that would otherwise would never have been considered were put forward by agents. This land was one of those applications. It is acknowledged in the development management report in front of you that at the time, quote, the proposed site was contrary to policy CS5 countryside and greenbelt of the Shropshire Core strategy, end quote. At the time, Shropshire Council had taken advice from a barrister and held meetings as a planning team to consider what powers were still retained. And many of you may have been part of that process. Over the last 10 years, this land has had a recurrent and chequered application history, as you will know with one strong rejection from Shropshire Council on the 26th of April 2019 that should be read in detail as part of the considerations for the current application. There is a detailed 17-page development management report explaining the decision in addition to the decision letter from Ian Kilby of Shropshire Council. He identified the land as countryside and subject to development restrictions. It was, quote, thus not supported in principle by both local and national policies, end quote. Ian Kilby stated, despite the council wanting to work with the applicant in a positive and proactive manner, it has not been possible to reach an agreed solution. The 26th of April 2019 correspondence is not referred to in the development management report in front of you, but the refusal of five applications at the time are in section 10.2. The applicant did not take up the opportunity to appeal the decision of April 2019. However, we are where we are today, despite the clear grounds to refuse the application. My statement today is to concentrate on one aspect, which is the land boundary of the application. The War Neighbourhood Plan Draft that was submitted to Shropshire Council included none of the land in question. At the time of the formation of the Neighbourhood Plan, there was approval for an outline application on this land, subsequently rejected with all matters reserved and Shropshire Council insisted on the development boundary that is in the final accepted neighbourhood plan and shown in red in your document. It is 6.2.9 in the development management report in front of you. The applicant has put a post and rail fence that goes significantly outside the boundary drawn on the neighbourhood plan and planted a fledgling hedge. 
The documents you have identify that the majority of plot 8 is in the aspect that is outside the neighbourhood plan. Plot 8 is stated to be for the applicant themselves. Plot 8 is the sole aspect of phase 1 of the development. There is a small amount of plot 9 also outside the boundary. The neighbourhood plan is the latest accepted document and as such should hold considerable weight. I urge you to consider all of this when you are debating the application and to reject it by refusing the application. A firm message needs to go out that this countryside land is entirely inappropriate for development. Thank you for listening to my statement. <coughs> and then the next um, statement is from War Parish Council. And they state, War Parish Council confirms its objections to planning application land west of London Road, War, Shropshire, and requests this is refused on the following grounds. War Parish Council have clearly demonstrated in the previous submitted objections of the 13th of September, 31st of October 22, and again 14th of April 2023, that this proposed development is in part outside the development boundary as shown on the War Neighbourhood Plan 2016 to 2036. Officers acknowledge in the development management report for this meeting that, quote, the proposed bungalow to the northwest of the development site would predominantly be located outside of the development boundary and that a small proportion of the proposed site subject to this current application falls outside of the War Neighbourhood Plan development boundary, end quote. When Outline Planning Commission was granted for 2002060 uh, OUT, the proposed development was within the War Neighbourhood Plan development boundary, uh, C6.5 figure B. War Parish Council had no alternative but to include this land within the development boundary because at the time it had a valid planning approval for 10 dwellings. It was not done by choice. If the green space had not been approved in the face of wide objection, the land would have continued to be designated green protected space, marking the boundaries of the separate communities within the parish of War. Therefore, any granting of permission for this proposed development is encroachment onto land designated open countryside in the War Neighbourhood Plan. War Parish Council have also made comment regarding the actual layout and design of the proposed development in that this again does not conform with War Neighbourhood Plan Policy HOU1, Scale and Location of New Properties, Policy HOU2, Housing Development, as well as Policy HOU3, Design. This planning application only shows minor amendments to what was originally granted in January 2016, which was prior to the adoption of the War Neighbourhood Plan. And then the application should now conform with the 2019 adopted War Neighbourhood Plan by Shropshire Council. With reference to, to 6.3.8 in the Development Management Report, they quote, the proposed development incorporates a two metre wide pavement along the site frontage, which will link into an existing footpath and provide easy and accessible traffic-free route into Ireland's Cross and towards the local facilities in War, end quote. This does not include that to reach the local facilities in War, that it will require crossing the A51 twice on the existing footpath on unmarked crossing points. War Parish Council have requested from Shropshire Council following a feasibility <coughs> carried out in May 2022 by WSP traffic calming measures to be introduced in assisting with speed reductions as well as the proposed HS2 incremental volume of vehicles for the HS2 project. War Parish Council requests that this committee take this into consideration in reaching its decision for the safety and well-being of any incremental residents. The end of that statement, Chair. Thank you, Frank. Um, we have one speaker, Jez Willard, you have to come forward, please. We have three minutes. Would you like a 30 second warning? Okay, uh, do you want to bring that bit closer to, uh, towards you? Spit the, the mic. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. Okay, lovely. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, members. Um, having uh, decided to attend today, my reason for attending was simply to rebut any third party or parish council comments. Um, having heard what's been said by those parties, I frankly don't feel there's anything that hasn't been explained in detail by your officer or is clearly set out in your report. If you look at pages 48 and 49, they uh, set out the principal argument that the officers described. If you look at pages 49 to 50, they deal with all the siting and layout issues which your officers 
have described. Um, I don't feel, frankly, there's anything further I can do to help members in taking their decision today. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Um, floor. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, I can see how that's right. Yeah, I've, I've seen the map. I think it's within the current boundaries. I do quite like that. The one with the hedge um, showing exactly where it was looks uh, quite good to me. Uh, obviously, the, the great grested newts are of great importance and they're going to be protected. Um, I think it looks a good site. I think this site has been negotiated over many years and I think it's going to be an asset to the village. And I'm happy to, um, to propose it. Thank you. For approval. Uh, Terry. Uh, happy to second that proposal, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. That's it. I'm going to go straight down. Go. Thank you, Nigel. Yeah. Uh, query, if I could, uh, planning officer. It's in relation to the comment that was made by Wall Parish Council in, in the statement they provided in respect of the um, inability of this application to deal with the uh, with the change in the design, etc., that's been brought forward by the refresh of the Wall or the neighbourhood plan. Is, is that something you can comment on? I mean, I mean, the, the, the design, they're, they're saying, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Ram, Ram, is that uh, insufficient notice has been taken of the, the Wall and Neighbourhood Plan in terms of the design of the development. Is that right? Well, as far as it goes, the Neighbourhood Plan, is, that's where they've got their line, the red one there. Yeah. No, I do it's right yeah, the design, but it's part of the scale. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, the, there's been significant amendments. I, I did point out where the garages and to some of the design of the houses. Uh, as a, a result of us officers reviewing all the comments made by by everybody, we then went back to the applicants and uh, they have made what I consider some significant changes to uh, uh, detail in relation to design and officers are now more than happy to support the application. Okay. I think We'll go to a show of hands on this vote, if that's okay. We have a proposed and second for this application. So all those in favour, be show. Unanimous. Unanimous. Thank you. Right, we'll go to the next application, which is... Lady Hill Farm, West Belton. And I think I welcome Sarah Robinson to present this, please. Welcome to you. Thank you, Chair. Um, so the application is made in full and proposes the conversion of a range of outbuildings to two four bedroom dwellings and the associated works at the farm holding known as Lady Hill Farm on the outskirts of West Felton. There are no updates to my report. Um, the application seeks the traditional farm buildings to be converted, which are of two storey and red brick construction. The application is presented to committee for the reasons set out in section three of the report. Um, the site location is coloured in red as well as proposed passing places and soakaway, and the land ownership is outlined in blue as you can see in the plan. Slide. Um, he can see the existing and proposed site plans. Uh, the uh, proposed plans indicate the two units alongside the two existing units known as Lady Hill Farm and Lady Hill. And it also outlines the amenity spaces and parking and garaging spaces. Next slide. So here are the existing elevations of the building to be converted. And here shows the proposed elevations, which demonstrate that the um, existing openings are to be retained. And there was a small modern lean-to, which is being removed to um, show the, existing, uh, the original historic fabric of the building. Um, and there is the existing first floor plan and the existing ground floor plan and the first floor plan, which demonstrates the uh, utilisation of the existing layout of the building. And the same with the ground floor plan. And there is the garage and carport uh, building, which demonstrates some, uh, uh, some indoor uh, storage. Uh, 
and here are photographs of the site. So the top left hand photo shows the uh, western elevation of the building overlooking the courtyard. The top right, um, uh, top right photo showing the eastern elevation, uh, which would also include the amenity space. Um, the bottom left hand photo is the from the northwest for along that highway and the bottom right hand corner is from the northeast along the highway. Um, in conclusion, the proposed development is considered to be acceptable and in accordance with the relevant local plan policies as set out in the report. As such, the recommendation is one of approval subject to the conditions as set out in Appendix 1 attached to the report. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Okay, I'll let you straight to the floor. Thank you, Mike. Just one question, really. Uh, it's about, um, it mentions a, an oil tank. Um, is that the only option for heating hot water, etc.? I just feel that that's a bit of a, an outdated solution. Uh, are there not going to be solar panels or heat pumps or anything of that nature? Or will it be solely rely, reliant on uh, oil for heating? Yeah, with the information that I've uh, received as part of the application, yeah, it, it is oil um, fuel that will be um, the main source. Yeah. That's quite interesting. I, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, with bonds of this nature, if they wanted to put solar panels in, uh, there'd be no objections from us as a plan authority. Which, it's something that uh, isn't in our part. We can't insist on it at this present time. We've based on our policies, other than what built, what the building regulations would request. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, the application seems a good one to bring into use. So, not that there's any parish here. It's not the issue from the conservation officer, the tree officer will be dealt with. I'm happy to uh, propose the for the recommendations. Thank you. Hang on, we've got to uh, Karen. Hey, just an observation, and I've raised this before, Mr. Chairman. It's hard for someone to focus on the more detailed plans on the screens there. Is there no way we can have them sent to our laptops at the beginning of the meeting so we can look at them a bit more closely? Because you know, that, that one's fine there, for example, but floor plans sometimes for us of a more advanced age are slightly harder to, to focus on. Just take um, yeah. yeah. And, and the other comment I've got um, you mentioned this is owned by Shops of Council. So will these houses be leased or will they be sold on the open market? And if they are going to be leased, why are we not looking at maybe a couple of three-bedroom affordable houses as opposed to two four-bedroom houses? Well, I presume it's going to be sold. We're discussing. We have to determine the application based on what's written before us. Yeah. And it's for two dwellings and uh, considering its rural location and the policies. Uh, it, it complies. Uh, as you can see, there's actually sand buildings and uh, we didn't have that proposal put to us. Uh, we can't insist on it. Uh, we, we, uh, as you would expect, we obviously have to work in accordance with your policies. Okay, just curious. Thank you. Oh, you've answered. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, I, I know the area quite well. I've <laughs> that road many times. A very... Um, steep verge on that road and I, I did I did see the earlier map. Is there some passing places yes. involved? Do we feel that do we feel there's enough there? It, it is I know there's a chap who runs a lorry business from down the bottom as well there, which is obviously quite a big thing to try and reverse down the narrow lane. So I just wondered is there, is there enough passing places? Uh, if you go back to the first slide, the location plan, there are um, two proposed passing yeah. places uh, which are conditioned as part of this application. Um, I believe it's condition number four. Yes. Yeah. yeah, condition number four. Uh, it's passing places are marked here on the plan on day. That's it, yeah. Okay. Which one uh, can I just ask how far a passing place has to be between each passing place? Because some people can't reverse, can they? Um, Unless you know, certainly from the farm to that first one, there doesn't seem much of a passing place. Um, our highways department have been consulted and raised no objections to proposed development subject to the conditioning of these two passing place, uh, places. I'm saying to that might all be much more 
traffic from the farm, the farm there because it's been less because it'll be houses rather than farm. Like I said, there'll be more than one tanker going down there every day. There'll be seven or eight vehicles going yeah, down there. Yeah, but that's farm vehicles as well, but that's just a... I, and I, I'd like to hope that if the road was that bad, our hangs obviously wouldn't have recommended approval. But they've had got two extra, that's some places. Yeah. Yes, there are two extra parking places, and you're quite right. You've got a part of planning balance from being the existing use and to the part of the Right, one meeting, please, over there. Jeff, it's very sparkly. Right, so we have a proposal. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Gary. Okay. We have a seconder. We shall move to a vote. I think we'll have a road call vote on this one, please. Yeah, it's a Shropshire Council. Yeah, Shropshire Council, but I think it's official. Okay, thank you, Chair. So the proposal is as per the officer recommendation. Um, Councillor Barrow? Four. Councillor Birchett? Four. Councillor Elner? Four. Councillor Clark. Four. Councillor Davenport. Four. Councillor Green. Four. Councillor Isherwood. 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 Four. Councillor uh, we came with a couple of things. We have debated for a long time. Why? So, okay. application proposes the construction of two free range poultry houses with feed bins and ancillary equipment on land adjacent to an existing free range poultry unit at Pagebrook Farm, Hadnell. Uh, as the chair just pointed out, members will recall this application was presented to last month's committee, at which members decided to defer the application for further consideration on manure management and its disposal. Uh, the applicants have since confirmed all manure produced on site will be transported to an AD plant at Lee Hall Energy, Lee Cross, Shrewsbury. And as such, this application this matter has been subject to advertising in accordance with the relevant EIA procedures and whistle this has not yet expired. Consultation period that is. All relevant consultee responses have been received and no objections have been raised by any of them. Uh, there are no updates on the update sheet to this report. I'll just run through the application now to remind you what it's all about. The application is made in full and is accompanied by an environmental statement. The application proposes up to 64,000 egg laying birds, which would mean 32,000 birds in each of the two proposed sheds. There's also 32,000 birds in the existing shed alongside the site. The amount of birds exceeds the threshold of Schedule 1 EIA development and hence an environmental statement required in support of the application and the requirement for committee consideration in accordance with the Council's constitution. Application site is as outlined in red before you. Uh, location of the two sheds as, as indicated, indicated here, one, two, and the existing shed alongside. Uh, that's the proposed block plan. So in the interaction, uh, on, on part of a disused airfield and farmland. Uh, this indicates a bird ranging plan in relation to each of the two sheds. Floor plans and elevations, uh, similar to existing on site. And paragraph 1.5 of the report attached to my update report uh, indicates uh, the building dimensions. Air scrubbers are also proposed on each of the sheds. Floor plans and elevations. Access to the site is directly off the uh, A49 along Paintbrook Lane with, with its pass, passing lane passing by to the farmyard and on to where the uh, shed is located. Proposed to be located rather. Uh, photographs of the site. Uh, 
which are coming on to now, sorry. There's the first one. Uh, relatively flat, no major dwellings, as set out in the report attached to the update report. Final photograph is of the existing shed on the site. As such, the current proposal is now considered acceptable on all issues. The local parish council supports the application, and whilst it is acknowledged three letters of objections were received to the application as originally submitted, it is considered issues raised are adequately addressed, and it is noted to date no further letters of objections have been received to the additional information on the manure management and its disposal. Drainage issues are also considered acceptable, subject to condition, as set out in Appendix 1 attached to the report. The application now considered acceptable and the requirements of EIA regulations 2017. As such, it is considered that the proposal now complies with policies CS5, CS6, CS17 and CS18 of the Shropshire Core Strategy and policies MD2 and MD7B of the SAMDEV, which are the main policies in relation to this application, as well as the National Planning Policy Framework and the Town and Country Planning uh, Environmental Impact Regulations 2017. The recommendation is therefore one of approval as set out at the start of the report, and once the EIA advertising date has expired, and on receipt of no adverse comments in the consideration of officers in consultation with the chair of committee, and uh, that the application is approved subject to conditions as set out in Appendix 1, attached to the report, and any amendments to these con conditions, if considered necessary by the service manager, on completion of the consultation period. Uh, that concludes my report on this application. Thank you, Mr Chair. Thank you, Philip. <coughs> right, Simon Jones may attend. I've seen him sneak in, so Simon, would you like to come forward, please? Simon's our local Memphis area. We have five minutes, Simon. Thank you. All right. Thank you. It's all right, I won't need the five minutes. Um, it's really just to uh, reiterate uh, what your chairman has said and the officer's report. Uh, this has been an ongoing um, application for quite some time now. And uh, the deferral last month uh, was subject to uh, two, two conditions, I think it was. Uh, those, as the officer's reported, those have actually now been addressed. So I would just... Um, hope that the uh, committee will agree to the officer's recommendation and approve. Subject to the conditions. Thank you very much. Uh, right. I know Nigel Duncan went here before we had a long discussion on it, so I'm going to propose from the chair to the officer's recommendation. Uh, you want to speak quite happily? Go forward, Mark. I'd like to second it. We have said a long bit last month. Um, they've now um, come round and got the EIA sorted. And I think, it, 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 I think it's the third time it's actually come to committee or nearly come to committee. So I think um, we do need more eggs. The shelves are getting empty at the moment. Um, and I think um, farming does need a bit of support at the moment. And I think this does show that Shropshire County Council or Shropshire Unity Council do support poultry. Um, but you have got to jump through all the loopholes to make sure you do build it properly. And, and we're fair to everybody who wants to join um, join it. So I think um, I think it's good, and we'll get the job sorted. So I, I second the poll's um, recommendation. <laughs> Just in case anyone does want to speak, is there anyone want to speak? Okay, my please will go with a show of hands if that's a reminder. All those in favour, please show. You know, let's speak on three. Thank you very much. So we go to appeals now. Appeals decisions. Any comments on appeals? You've got your papers, any comments? Oh, we're going to be passionate, right? Pardon? Within the whole passion, this is fine. No, no. Oh. Yeah, you are for appeals. Yeah, yeah. So we're right, we're still open session. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. No? 
Philip, like to sort of yeah. say anything? I I just like to, they're noted obviously by officers, but I'd like to I comment on the there's one decision at 17 New Street when, which was for a care home, and I think this is one to pick, take particular attention to, as it's very clear in the interpretation of policy and open space. And it, I, I feel that would be a very good read for you uh, with, with future applications coming forward to this committee with regards to policy ND2. Thank you. Thank you. Right, item 10, exclusion of public and press. Maybe there who has to leave. Go from the go from the Yes, the committee agrees. Yeah. 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 Thank you very so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm rising just waiting for the live stream. Yeah, it's just, okay, so I see.